and it's with like, I guess, woke and maybe not so woke um, where the woke people will say there's not like, it's not a t- hard time to be a comedian. And if you think it's a hard time being a comedian because you don't get to say horrible words anymore, but look, obviously you shouldn't say these bad words. We're talking about like, you know, gay slur or any like slurs towards any racial or, you know, yeah. groups of people or, you know, stuff like that. We, everyone's in agreement on that, but it is still, you, I don't think anybody could, di- if you disagree that it's not a weird time to do stand up, you're not paying attention. Here's how I know it's a weird time to do stand up. This is obviously before COVID. Every set, not every set, but maybe a handful of sets a week. Say I'm doing six shows in a week. At least after three of those shows, regular audience people will come up to me and say, Hey, is it weird doing stand up? It's like, it's a hard time to do stand up, right? Because people are like so uptight. If regular people are aware of that, then it's a fucking thing. It's right. 100% it's, a thing. Yeah. If it's not within the community, strictly within the community and other outsiders know, then yeah, it's a thing that people are aware of. People come up to you too, right after shows, being like, "Hey, is it weird now doing stand up with with stuff?" Yeah, they're like, "Oh, you got to be afraid." I'm like, "I can't. I'm not afraid because I can just say I can throw out the Latino card." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, he can say anything." Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like, see, it's a hard time for a white dude to do comedy. It is, you know. I like that it, Tim Dillon dude a lot. I, you know, I, I met him way back when, and you know, um, I think he's fucking hilarious. Yeah. And um, and really respect the hell out of what he's doing, but he's got the gay card. He's gay. Right. So sometimes you post stuff where I'm like, if you were a straight dude, I think his fans would like it, but I feel like the people like as an industry as a whole would not be as warm or receptive to him. But also the, the, good thing, the, the good thing about him is that you don't, you don't think gay right away. You don't No, you, it's nothing to do with his act. Yeah. Right. You think a big dude, like loud Jersey or long Island, wherever the fuck he's from. Long Island, think, and he's right. funny. And then he kids you with like, Oh, I'm gay. Like almost like Bill Cruz. Like remember Bill Cruz, love he, Bill Cruz. He would he would tell his jokes and then like later on like throughout the set he would reveal that he was gay, and I've only seen that backfire on him one time and that was at uh, the <laughs> that room on the south side at Watcher that Mike Yo used to do, and all those drunk Mexicans were like, wait, what, what, what? <laughs> yeah, they were, just, they were just not having it. <laughs> like they tuned him out the minute he said he was gay. It's like, nah, bro, we ain't we ain't like that down here. But I think if you're funny, that kind of like. I, I don't even know if it's I think it's only a hard time for if you suck at it and you can't work your way out of it. Yeah, like, no, I agree. Say something like how the like you that one time at the Laugh Factory and we the we did that show and that lady wouldn't shut the fuck up, but she was the only one that was bothered it, bothered by it, and she didn't give you a chance to work your way out of it. You know what I'm saying? No, so, yeah. That's that's the part where it's weird, where people are just like not giving you a chance to like, hey, I'm gonna bring this around, just fucking I know that's, it's that's what I mean. That's where I think it's tough. And I haven't dealt with that too many times, fortunately, but when it happens, it's like, it's like big, it's like, yeah. a, it's big when it happens and it feels big. Um, I don't know if I've talked about this on the podcast. I think I have. Abby's referencing to when laugh factory, this is maybe one of the last weekends. Um, comedy was still going down. Um, I remember I did four shows that week and yeah. at laugh factory. And I did the joke for three out of the four and I'd been doing the joke. It's actually on my last album. And, you know, I had one other time where the joke had a problem, and that was in LA when I first touched on the joke. I'd even, yeah. I then put the joke on a shelf because it had like an issue. Actually, yeah, no, you didn't, didn't get a chance to work it out to work to work your way back to making a valid point. Like, yes, I actually, I let me take that back a little bit. When I first did the joke, I was doing it at the Long Beach Laugh Factory, which was a very diverse room. Then I did it in an alt show in LA where the room wasn't diverse. Which always cracked me up about alt shows. Yeah, the lineup's diverse, but the audience is all white people who fucking <laughs> like the same things, hang out the same places, look the same. You know, yeah. you're in a sea of flannels. No women shave their armpits, like that crew. You know, <laughs> and so no diversity really. And I got some shit for it, and then it kind of made me gun shy about the joke for a stretch. Then I brought it back, and again, it's it's killed most places. What was funny about that night was one woman hated it, and she was a black woman. I think because the she, other I she was, I thought she was white too, but then people oh, were okay. like, but all the other, there was the whole, the, the crowd was very diverse that night. And the other black people were like, fuck her. We thought it was great. Right. And Corey um, Bell, who's the best. And 
everyone else on the show were like, yeah, Joe's not racist. She was just there. Like Corey said best. She's like, this is a person who went to a comedy show by themselves on a Friday fucking night and was just waiting to be upset, looking for it. And you presented the best opportunity looking the way you look and then bringing up race. Cause yeah. I guarantee as soon as I brought brace, she was like, all right, here we go. Let, let's see if I could yeah. stop on the guy. And, and she did. And that's what sucked was it was my last joke and I didn't want to go long. Cause I was in the middle and you know, it was a whole thing where I'm like, I can't, I can't just end my set. Cause you told me to shut the fuck up that well, I will not allow. You can't, Cause then you're going to lose. <laughs> and the best part was you told her to shut the fuck up and basically got everyone back on your side. Like, yeah, fuck you lady. Like just let us enjoy this. Whatever. It was fucking great. Yeah, thanks, buddy. But I yeah, that's it. the I thing. I agree with you. If you're, if, it's if you're a good yeah. comic, this is still it's still a great time to be a comedian. But yeah. there are going to be weird moments where th th that is a thing. I just wish people would try not to deny that. Like when people say cancel culture isn't real, then why do people say hashtag cancel this person? It's right. something. You, it yeah. might not have the effect you want it to have, but it is a thing. But you know? now the, the only problem is like when you try to cancel somebody for something that you're like that you should get over. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like there's there's things that like, man, that's fucking that's crazy that this person did it. Then there's other things where you're like, that's what you're reaching for. Like now we're we're gonna cancel this because of a bad Facebook status. And now you gotta go back through every other time and it's like, all right, this is dumb. Like you're you're wasting your energy and my energy on me having to defend myself for this thing. Yeah, but I always want people to think to themselves, is this a bad person or do they have a bad moment? Because that's right. a huge difference. We yeah. all have bad moments as people. Right. And with the whole cancel culture thing, when people say it's not real, what they're saying is they didn't truly get canceled because they're still making a living. And I'm like, well, do you want them to be in jail the rest of their life? I mean, obviously, if it's someone who committed a real crime, that's you're not canceling them. They should be convicted. That's right. what the yeah. fucking phrase should be. My you know? uh, my problem with the cancel culture thing is like you don't also you cancel them but you give them no path to redemption. Yeah. So the minute now they're just labeled as that one thing because you decided that and it's like no this person has it like let them prove they can come back and be in good graces and like that they were just they, they had a moment that they were a dick or whatever the fuck it was and then but now that you cancel them they're supposed to be dead to everybody forever like that's so dumb to me because it's like. I got family members that have stolen shit from me. I still talk to them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, I should have canceled them out of my life, but no, they got some good qualities. They just stole something, you know? Like, yeah. I mean, is this, is it someone like, oh, this 23 year old baseball player had a bunch of stupid tweets when they were 14? Okay. Like, look, yeah. they, could, they could work their way back from that. Obviously, if they're a murderer or rapist, there's no redemption. Fuck them. They should go in jail. Right. Harvey Weinstein should rot in prison. No yeah, shit. Yeah, video That's not eating. That get rid of this person. You're on video beating a woman, then yes. Yeah. Cancel you. Yeah. You know, you, you have to find another line of work. You can't be a baseball player. Yes. You, you were 14 years old and you said faggot. All right. Like <laughs> he's, yeah. does he still think that way? Did he, did he start hanging out with gay people and now he doesn't think that way? You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, was he just saying it? Because, you know, when we were kids, you would say that word if someone like was shitty at Mario Kart, you didn't think yeah. that meant they like dudes. Then you got older and you realize older and you realize why that could be offensive towards someone and yeah. then you get beyond that, right? Like, I'm saying it. like I don't want anyone canceling Abby five years from now when they hear him say that word on my podcast. He was quoting a 14 year old everybody right. don't fuck him up. Yeah. And it's like, now do you know my history? Do you, have you seen like how I act with people? If find someone else that has something bad to say about me or any group of people that has something, something bad to say about this person still then okay, then maybe they can't be redeemed or saved. But I think the fact that you cancel them and leave no room for them to come back is that's beyond that's dumb to me. That's not even human nature. That's yeah. fucking weird. That's just like that's internet culture where it's like delete gone forever. Like that's the mentality. Yeah. I'm not a fan of that. I'm not either. There is that internet culture there. There's like so much so many things that are great about the internet, but there is its own little culture, its own little world where um, it lacks empathy and it's funny cause they yeah. don't realize that these, I right. feel like a lot of people, these are people who preach, we need more empathy. Like, cause they think empathy is like, we need housing for the homeless, which is yes, that is empathy, but you also need empathy for people who 
maybe they made a mistake or think about their circumstance. No one ever thinks about those, that person's circumstances. Right. Like maybe there's a law and order episode, the you episode where it showed that that person got their ass kicked every fucking day. Their mom would put cigarettes out on them and stuff like that. Maybe that's why he thinks women are sluts. Like maybe that's why he said something. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, I don't know, you know what I mean? Like, you gotta look at the person. You can't just look at that one action because that one action is not defined. Now, if it's a series of actions, then yes. Ted there Bundy is not a good dude towards women. Because <laughs> yeah, don't you believe in rehabilitation? Don't you believe we could rehab some people and, and turn them into better people and be like, yeah. hey, listen. And it's, like I, it's all through exposure. Anybody that like, if they're 14 years old and they have a racist tweet is because maybe their dad or whoever says something racist and that's who the people that are around. Then they get older and move out of that small town that they're in and they realize that, oh, I was wrong. They just didn't think to go back and delete a tweet from fucking 12 years ago. Yeah. But now that person is still that, you know what I'm saying? You're still counting that person. Like, did you grow in that, in those years? Then why wouldn't that person, you know what I'm saying? It's, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's so weird. I remember like Tulsi Gabber when she was like 21, 22 said a bunch of, had said some anti-gay stuff. And in these, these past primaries, people were so like, like coming out against her. And I'm like, you're the same people who were going Yas queen to Hillary. And she had these views up until 2013. <laughs> Tulsi at least changed her mind in 2007. You, you know, you were like, it, it just, it's strange to me sometimes who you choose to forgive and who you choose don't do, not to forgive. And, and that's, where, that's where the whole thing for me is just, it doesn't, I don't care because it's how fickle it is that it's like, okay, you can't even justify half the shit you do. So why would I even care? Like that yeah. you kind of cancel such and such. Like, I don't give a fuck. I've gotten better about that too. It's like, why take criticism from someone you want to want advice from? Like just yeah, little yeah. stuff like that. It just kind yeah. of help you just kind of block out all that kind of noise and stuff like yeah. that. I just want people to have fun and get along and kind of like, you know, I'm still optimistic about the future in a lot of ways. I definitely um, have kind of given I, up I, on some aspect of society though, too. Yeah. I think, I think it's going to be a lot closer to what we were used to than we think is going to be like, yeah, there'll be some changes, but we'll definitely still have that freedom to fuck around. And not yeah. really much. Well, it's as big as the internet's been and and as great as the internet's been for connecting people, it still feels like it's also great at dividing people. Like, well, totally, totally. Yeah. But it also feels you know, instead of making the world feel bigger, to me, it's made the world feel smaller in a sense, because what happens is people find other like-minded people and they just build a bigger community but if you're staying within your four little walls that you've created for yourself you're not getting other opinions coming in i saw someone tweet something recently where it's like um something like some weird thing where i'm like okay you've never traveled outside of san francisco or new york or la where the fuck you live because there's yeah. something about like trans people you know and obviously we've said great things about trans people on this show already but it was like um you all need more trans people in your life. And in my brain, I'm like, how many trans people do you think there are? I like Google it <laughs> and they estimate like 900,000 in America. I'm like, where, you know what I mean? Like I think a lot of people on who are active in these bubbles on like Twitter, especially they have no idea what the rest of the country acts like and looks like and uh, for better or for worse. But like, like in Iowa, I was 97% white. Like, you know what I mean? Right. Like, when someone, right. like, they need more black people. I'm like, well, yeah, they do. But I mean, I don't know if they like, it's I'm like not a, saying they don't or they do. But my point is when someone says like, do these people not know any black people? They say that like, come on. No, they really don't though. Because they they're don't. live within thousands of miles, you know? Yeah. Like comics said, have only worked a city. Then they go out into like a three hours outside of Chicago and they bomb and they say those people are dumb. Like, no, you talked about the subway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You talk about parking, you know what I'm saying? You talk about the random talk about Pilsen for 20 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you can't, if you, you know, if you can't relate to them, then that's a, that's a you thing. Like you just haven't got, you haven't expanded your reach. Exactly. And I, I think a lot more people need to fucking just get outside the little bubbles and just like realize that there's other shit out there. Oh so. yeah, man.